Welcome to the God Pill. Gentlemen, today we are going to talk about validation and recognition. If you've been in the manosphere for any length of time, one of the very first things you learn is to transcend the need for female validation, embedded in most beta males. Few advancements in one's red pill journey are as significant as overcoming this yearning. It makes one a much more rational being. People are more inclined to respect, and that is less susceptible to manipulation. Now, many would say this is largely an issue of the indoctrination of blue pill conditioning, and much of that is true. But there are other facets. A child will naturally seek the validation of its mother. She is wiser, more competent, and possesses more authority, after all, than a young child. This stance where the opposite sex can bleed over into a man's dynamic and interaction with other women, where it shouldn't. Additionally, mothers can socially condition sons as slaves to the sisterhood, which Darwinianly makes sense as their genes propagate better if they have grandkids, and the odds of them having grandkids is higher if you are a natural alpha or a dutiful productive beta, not someone in the middle. The audiobook is adapt the audiobook I adapted, The Anatomy of Female Power, gets into this a bit with the chapters on cradle power. Uh, third, there is the religious element, which has two parts. First, as Esther Villar Discussed in a manipulative man, she believed man's pedestalization of woman was religious, on some level, in nature. That some men have a sort of fear of recognizing and revering God, and feel more comfortable directing that need towards woman. The second is simply our imperfect nature. Adam simped for Eve. He valued a creation more than the source. And we've been cursed with the burden of performance ever since for his idolatry. Because we are inferior to Adam, men are born with a strong predisposition to this idolatry. And the natural consequence of defing this wo uh, these women is to seek validation from these goddesses. A man that displays a desire for female validation is repulsive to the fair sex. This is because it is an inherently submissive position. It conveys clear weakness, and for better or worse, nothing in this world repulses a woman like weakness just as nothing attracts them like power. Seeking validation from any woman that is not your mother or an elderly wise woman is wrong. Validation seeking is feminine. It negates polarity. Women constantly concern themselves with what others think of them and seek consensus and approval. The desire for validation is perfectly natural for women, and we'll see more on that shortly. There's a lot of effort in the manosphere, especially MGTOW, for men to stop being thirsty. Which is wise, it is a great point of vulnerability, but is it merely libido that is the cause? Short of one feeling God manifesting his approval, there is nothing more reassuring to a man's ego than a woman seeming enthusiastic in carrying out an act that could create your children she'd incubate for nine months and raise. It's the greatest act of acceptance a human can experience. Really, no wonder a beta male who, as it is, biologically fears the end of his genetic decline more than physical death, would find this the most validating thing in the world, especially if he was raised in an environment where he feels, and was taught, there is something inherently wrong with him and men in general, and has internalized it. A man that is optimal in drawing woman after a time, overcomes any insecurities or scarcity mindset, and stops harnessing his full potential in frequency of intercourse and variety of woman. The reward to his ego has substantially diminished, and there is no reason to indulge in pleasure constantly when one is secure in its supply. When a person voices note of some positive action or characteristic of a being that's their better in some aspect, if the recipient of praise is not improperly insecure, it's taken as recognition, not validation. While both appeal to one's ego and self-esteem, the distinction is not insignificant. It's actually fairly crucial. Those higher that know they are higher and aren't inappropriately insecure do not need validation from one below them in some aspect. This is why men value respect more than love in surveys. While women would rather be loved than respected, scripturally men are to agape their wives, while women are to respect their husbands. The conclusion of Ecclesiastes gets into this in a way the penultimate verse of Solomon's reflection on life states, the conclusion of the matter, everything having been heard, is fear the true God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole obligation of man. This may seem like two requirements, but fundamentally it's really one. 
I'm not Orthodox, but in some Orthodox churches, there is a teaching that there are three levels of submission to God, a slave fearing punishment, a servant seeking reward, and a child desiring to please its father. Fear, self-interest, and love, each of these is a different motivation to submit to someone, and though their value differs, as long as any of them is strong enough, someone has it in themselves to submit. It's, uh, that's why God emphasized the fear of him and expressed sadness when it was lost. It's not because he wants anyone to fear him, but if someone does not submit at that minimal level, then there is no basis for the person to submit, cooperate, behave, etc. He can't work with them in that state. You as a man are in the image of God, imperfect as you are, presently, as Adam's descendant. Your ancestor was created to have dominion over all that walks the earth. Man is to be revered, which means man is to be in a validation-seeking setting towards God and Christ, and a recognition-oriented setting when it comes to women, children, and men under your authority. The role of validation is clear. A subordinate is singled out for attention. If it's public, they also gain social status, and they are reassured they are valued, that there is an investment on them by the stronger party. This motivates them toward performance, reduces alienating power distance, and creates a sense of security, which is the prime reason why women crave attention. If there is no attention available, then there is no one around that can be persuaded to improve their environment, attend to their needs, desires, and safety. Internalize that, men. Recognition, not validation. But remember, you are the strong party compared to women. Recognition is not something you need, certainly not to the extent women need validation. While it can feed the ego similarly to validation, recognition is a bit different. Recognition is largely a tribute paid to reality. And if you're the topic, reality in association with your nature, actions, and standing in society. When a person of lower station pays this tribute, and it's authentic, not flattery, it builds goodwill between the strong and the dependent. When a person knows those in lower stations or circumstances are grateful, then they are much more inclined toward benevolence. Resentment breeds resentment. A good man wants to lift everyone up, but when the reality of circumstances is not acknowledged through the expression of resentment by dependents, it signals there is no good in a strong maintaining support. Essentially, respect and recognition are what a man should orient himself around but not as a need, rather a barometer of how much helping people is a good investment in society. In dynamics of dominance and submission, and I'm saying that much more broadly than intersexual dynamics, so long as a submissive party has the option of being free from the dominant party, then the submissive's ongoing presence means it's to the benef their benefit, often disproportionately so. But that is okay. It's not like God benefits more from us individually than we from him. He needs nothing. The important thing in any relationship between two parties is not who benefits more, but that both benefit, or the giver consents to a loss. You shouldn't obsess in comparing points between you and love interest, and be indignant if you bring more to the table, but rather focus on if they are an overall asset, beyond any liability. Going back to the Bible, in Revelation, a similar sentiment to Ecclesiastes is voiced. Fear God and give glory to him. Worship is, at its core, the manifestation of submission, recognition, and gratitude. It's a tribute we pay to the self-existent source of all good in alignment with reality. Men are to be reverenced as his image, but God's glory is to be above all. The point at which one is afforded glory is derivative, if to the extent a life form reflects God. The more we align in our lives with external reality generated by the Creator, the more optimally we will function in life. Scripture directs men to assign woman honor, as weaker vessel. If you examine this wording, it conveys the notion of a monarch favoring a subject. The man is in the position to validate her. I could go into where validation intersects with women's hypergamy, but I don't want to ramble on too long. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if, it could leave, if I could leave you with just one concept, guys, understand the true state of men in regard to validation, recognition, glory, honor, dominance, submission, all that. Stay strong, men, as you build your futures. If you liked this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, donate, and comment. Every bit of feedback and support is appreciated, and have an exceptional day.